Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm sorry. Um, I have been putting up this live is going to be not only just here on Facebook, but it's also going to be on Instagram. So I was actually getting that all together. So hey, Facebook, hey, Instagram. Thank you guys uh, for joining this live. Uh, this live is very strong. Um, first, I want to, I definitely want to pray before I even give this word. Um, but I want to uh, share with you all what the Lord has been giving uh, me within the last month, a little over a month now. And I mean, it has literally um, been, I can say breathtaking. When I say breathtaking, I, I literally mean snatching your breath. Um, I do believe that when we first get saved, you know, just us as believers, when we first get saved, we do actually um, encounter, you know, God. And then, of course, we encounter God in all different kinds of ways and different kinds of avenues. Um, but I do believe that the Lord also opens our eyes uh, to what we can handle, to what we can actually see. And um, because he knows what we can handle, he knows what we can see. But then what also happens as well um, is the more that we begin to grow in Christ and the more we begin to grow into the things of God, it um, God will begin to kind of take away that filter a little bit and we're able to see more in the spirit realm. And so uh, first, before I actually go more into this live, let me just pray. So Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you that you joined us here on this live, Father. We thank you, O oh God, that all hearts and minds are open, O oh God, to this word. My God, Rekanda Bosoya, Lord, allow it to, O oh God, even pierce through the soul and the spirit. In the name of Jesus, Lord, allow it to open up all of our eyes, O oh God, but Lord, that we also feel your love, O oh God, because we know, O oh God, that you, O oh God, my Rekanda Bosoya, you wish that no man would perish, O oh God but to have eternal life oh god so lord we thank you for your um for your patience to give us even this time and this opportunity to be able to even uh repent and and do the things that we need to do to be able to get um ourselves and our lives in order with you father and so in jesus name amen and so this topic again um it's a strong topic um i my god god has to help me with this life so um this topic is about my experience my encounter in hell um it wasn't it wasn't just like a vision it wasn't like a dream this was this was real like this was absolutely real my spirit was there and i seen it the things that i've seen my god um hell is not a place it was never made for humans. It's not a place for humans whatsoever. Hell is a real place. The earth um, is not hell. I know that there are some people who really believe that earth is hell um, just because of all the things that goes on in earth. And um, that is definitely incorrect and it's not biblical. Uh, God did not create the earth in that manner in the way that it is now the reason why the earth is the way that it is now is because there is darkness that has hovered over the earth and there has been so many different things uh that um has been done to the earth to the ground um and even again even in a scripture the lord cursed the ground of the earth um so what we see right now is not what was actually originally designed and planned when god created earth but hell definitely was created uh, for demons. They were created not only just for demons, but for the fallen angels uh, who had rebelled against God when it was that great rebellion in heaven. And so um, just getting into this encounter. So my first encounter that I had, it was so strong. I was actually um, in my prayer closet and I was just praying you know, it was one of those, you know, you just praying and you just loving on God and, you know, you just in the middle of like some, some good worship. 
and I began to see um, an angel. And this specific angel is always with me. So I'm very familiar uh, with this angel. So I'm like, okay, you know, this angel is about to come. He's about to come and tell me something, you know, that the Lord is is wanting to tell me. You know, I'm I'm ready. I'm excited. And so while I'm, I'm praying this stuff and the angel gets closer and closer and closer to me. And uh, good afternoon, mom. My spiritual mom is on, uh, Apostle Marjorie Nelson. Um, so while I'm in prayer, the angel comes. He comes closer and closer and closer to me. And he begins to speak to me. And he said, hey, um, he was like, Alexis, God wants me to show you something. So, of course, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm excited. You know, when God wants to show me something, I, I'm excited to hear what God has to say. You know, um, I'm just that daughter that just like literally sits at the feet of God and just, you know, is ready just to listen to everything that he has to say. So what ends up happening was I go and um, there was this portal that was open and it, it, it's so heavy, guys. This, this thing is so heavy. So it was literally a portal that just opened up this huge circle looking thing that opened up in my closet and he took my spirit with him. And so I'm like, okay, now usually when the angel is taking me somewhere is light. This was not light. It was completely dark. It was dark and dark and dark and dark. And, um, I began to hear screams, piercing screams. And uh, I, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, uh, why? I instantly knew the moment that I was in darkness, I instantly knew that I was in hell. And so my first reaction was, what is going on? Why am I here? I'm freaking out because I know my name is in the book of life. So I'm like, why am I here? Why, why did you take me here? This is not, this is not, you know, what I was signing up for when I said, I'm ready to hear what the Lord was, was getting ready to tell me or show me. And the angel said so calmly, he said, it's okay. I'm, I'm with you, but God wants you. He wants to show you uh, where he snatched you out of, but not only where he snatched you out of, he wants to show you, uh, he just wanted to show you something. So I was like, okay. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm, we're walking. While we're walking, okay, I begin to see literally, literally all my family members. I've seen like just a few distinctively, um, and I'm not going to, you know, share their names, but I just seen a few distinctively, but um, I actually heard the Lord tell me that um, out of all of my family, on both sides of my family, only one person made it to heaven when they passed away. And so... What ends up happening was I began to see my family members in hell. Not only did I see my family members in hell, I seen the different torments that was actually happening to them. And it was, it was freaking me out. Okay. And they were all in different areas and different spots of hell. And what was so strong was these people I was seeing, they were alive. They weren't even dead. And so God began to um, tell the angel to tell me, he said, tell Alexis that your spirit can already be here in hell while you're living on earth. And the devil, the devil, what he does is he tries to do everything that he can to speed up the process to make you uh, die sooner so that you, your, your soul will go into hell for eternity. And so while I'm there, I'm seeing these clocks, literally like these analog clocks over everyone's head, who is currently alive. The ones who were dead, they didn't have any clocks over their heads. So the ones who were currently alive, they had these clocks. Some clocks were going faster. Some clocks were going slow. Some clocks, it was literally a chunk of time that was being taken off and it would go red. And then it was some clocks that it would go back up and it was green. Those were signifying that when they were going faster, that meant that their, their lifespan was actually, the, the, the clock represented the time 
the time that you have here left on this earth. Then not only did it um, represent that, but when it was going slow, that was the signal of grace. When it was going fast, that's just, there was no grace on your life. Then when it was a chunk being taken away, um, there's a scripture that says for children um, to uh, honor your parents so that you may live a long life. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing this, but it's talking about for uh, children to honor their parents, to not dishonor their parents. Because if you dishonor your parents, you can cause your life to shorten. So people's lives for different things, different things that they spoke, different curses, um, just uh, dishonoring spiritual leaders, all these different things can take your life away. And then when I seen it go green, it was actually adding to the life. So it was adding years onto your life. And we even see that with Hezekiah when um, the prophet came to Hezekiah and he told him, you know, hey, get your affairs in order because you're getting ready to die. And once he said that, uh, Hezekiah went and prayed and repented. And that was the biggest part. He went, prayed and repented. And then the prophet turned back around and came to him and said, God added 15 years to your life. So even the things that I'm telling you guys, these are all in the Bible. This is not what, what I'm witnessing. It's things that we have all read in the Bible. And so as I'm, I'm walking, I'm literally seeing just all kinds of torments, all kinds of screams, all kinds of pains. And what um, really broke me being there was um, back in, if anyone knows me, back in um, 2008, I think it was 2008. My grandfather passed away um, unexpectedly in 2008. Me and him was like really cool, but I never really um, knew, you know, where he went. And that was the thing as a kid that I struggled with because I never knew if he went to heaven, if he made it to heaven, if he made it there, or if he went to hell. And I seen my papa there and I literally broke down you guys I broke down when I tell you I broke down I'm crying I'm freaking out um and he ran up to me but he couldn't touch me and when he ran up to me he came up and he was screaming and said why didn't anybody tell me about this place why did nobody tell me this place was real and that was so strong that was so strong because there's so many people in the body of Christ that are literally either they passed away and they went to hell. They never really believed that hell was really real. They did not take their life here on earth serious. It did not really understand that God accounts for everything that we do on this earth, whether it's productive or whether it's idle. And so I, I literally, um, was like freaking out like at that point because i've seen so much i've seen the different torments um in hell and, and it's graphic so that's why i'm not really going to share it um it, it is real this thing is real guys this thing is so real so i'm i'm freaking out uh, all of a sudden my my spirit is like i came back to my senses my spirit came back into my body and i'm like i'm flipping out i'm freaking out I'm like, like not going crazy, but I'm freaking out. I was like, God, you got to get me out of here. You got to get me out of here. Like I'm, I'm screaming. And, um, the angel that was with me, he came back into my closet and he touched me. He said, it's okay. You're it's okay. Calm down. And I was like, please don't take me back there. Please don't take me back there. Please don't take me back there. Next thing you know, I literally felt my spirit leave my body again and I'm back in hell. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like, God, why do you keep bringing me back to this place? Why do you keep bringing me back to this place? This time, I'm in a different section. So hell, one, is not like just like just one place. Hell is huge and it's actually expanding every day. That's one thing I do want to um, say. Hell is literally expanding every day. When you think of the earth, 
there's different parts, there's different countries, there's different sections, you got cold areas, you got hot areas, you got all these different things, same thing in hell, it's just dark and demonic, and, and, and it's, it's bad, you know, it stinks, it's hot, you can't breathe in there at all, and so, this time I was in a completely different area, I seen um, these mountains, and when I seen these mountains, I seen also these prisons, and when I seen these prisons, I seen pastors in these prisons. And when I say pastors, I'm saying I seen one pastor uh, that's already dead. I seen him. The other pastors I seen are alive right now. Not only did I see these pastors that are alive in these prisons, they there were these wolves inside of the prisons. And they were literally tormenting these pastors. They were like gnawing on them. And even the Lord said that when um, we experience like torment here on earth, a lot of times the reason why, a lot of times the reason why the torment that we receive, that we're feeling on earth, is because our spirits are literally being tormented in hell. And we can actually feel that torment. We can actually feel that torment. Our spirit man can feel it. You know, and, and it is it's literally a place of unrest. It's a place of unrest. Thank you, um, Apostle Nelson. Yeah, here's the scripture. So it's Isaiah 5 and 14. It says, therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. So that is just showing proof there in the scripture that hell is always enlarging. So again, I seen um, these pastors. And again, I seen these clocks on their head. And these pastors, you all, are very well-known pastors. They're highly known. They're like high-class pastors. These are one of them are one of the, and I'm not going to say any names, but you guys are going to know who I'm talking about. Um, but one of them, um, the world literally looks up to them. You know, if, if, a, if, a, if a pastor sins, literally, if a pastor sins, they take them to that pastor so he could speak blessings on them and they honor him like he's a God. They look up to him like he's a God, but he's actually literally in hell. And not only is he in hell, but he has literally dragged millions of people. Yes, millions of people um, in hell with him. And so what happens is a lot of times, especially us as leaders, the reason why we are held accountable to another level than um, uh, to a higher level is because we're actually we are actually um, shepherds over the Lord's people. And so we're actually held accountable for our sins. You know, if we have children, we're held accountable to what we did with our children. But then also, if we have people that sat up under us, that we mentored, that we coached, that we um, that we preached to, uh, congregations and things like that, we have to give into account of all of those souls. So with all of these souls, we are literally held responsible for. And so um, if a pastor let's say a pastor falls if a pastor falls and he had like you know a thousand people let's say he had a thousand no let's say he had a hundred people if a pastor falls he had a hundred people ten percent of the of that hundred you know will literally they will move on that's the remnant the other 90 percent that pastor is literally dragging them with them and unfortunately we live in a day now where um a lot of people they rely on the pastors they rely on their leaders instead of having a relationship with god they actually uh put their relationship with of god upon the relationship that the pastor has and then that is dangerous because the pastor could not have relationship with god at all and so um so yes yeah, so i've seen the pastors um in hell and what the Lord was telling me, and honestly, everyone that I've seen in hell, for the most part, these were all Christians. They were all elders. They were Christians. They were uh, people. Some people had titles. Some people didn't. Some people just, you know, um, you know, are believers in Christ. And it was shown, God was showing me that Christians can go to hell. 
It is not biblical that you just get baptized in Jesus name and, and you feel with the Holy Ghost and you speak in tongues. And, and then that's like your ticket to heaven. That's not. It is not. Because we have to. We have to give into account of our hearts. How is our heart with God? How is our heart with the Lord? And a lot of times our heart can be distant from the Lord. The word says. The world says that our heart is deceitfully wicked. It's wicked, but it's deceitful. Who can know our heart? Only God can know our heart. And so it is so um, strong. It is absolutely uh, strong, just even, you know, with our hearts. And um, only God knows our heart. And so that's why even when it comes to judgment day, when judgment day comes and we see what we did on this earth, no, there, there's nobody that goes into hell not knowing why they went to hell. They don't ask, why am I in here? They, as soon as they go, they already know. So then the second encounter that I had was even stronger. Um, and at this point, I just kind of, I kind of felt it. Like I just kind of felt that it was coming. And uh, when I went into my prayer closet, um, it was a different angel that came. Actually, I'm going to read this, this scripture that Apostle Nelson put. It says, let them alone, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall uh, fall into the ditch. That's Matthew 15 and 14. And that's reference into uh, leaders. When leaders are literally, you know, when they fall and then they're, you know, and they're blind, they're le literally leading everyone else um, into their fall and into the blind, uh, the blindness. Now the second, um, encounter that I had in hell was extremely strong as well. So this time, uh, when I went, it was, um, it was an angel that came. It was an angel that came. This angel was completely different. This angel looked like he did not play any games. It, he, he was like, it was a warring type of angel. And so I knew that whatever God was getting ready to show me, you know, uh, a warring angel had to be there for protection. So when I went, uh, we went there and this time I seen, um, you know, different areas, uh, again of hell. It was a little bit more open where I could see a little bit better. When I went, I seen this guy and this guy ran up to me and, um, when he ran up, when he ran up to me, uh, it, the cross literally came in between me and the guy. So he couldn't get up too close. Uh, he couldn't get up too close to me and the angel. And he began begging. He was begging me for some water. He was like, can you, can you give me some water? Can you give me some water? And I wasn't able to, um, I wasn't able to answer his question about the water. And uh, then he literally said, if y'all mind you guys, while I'm there, I'm seeing people praying in hell. I'm seeing people preaching in hell. Like I literally seen people like, I don't know how they were sitting down, but I seen people sitting down and they were like preaching. And I, in my mind, I'm like, how can they be preaching? Like, you know, hell's fire and everybody here that they're preaching to is in hell. And so there were, um, there were preaching. So the guy comes to me and he said, please, please, please. Can you, can you pray for my family that they don't end here, that they don't end up here? Nobody told me about this place. Can you please tell me, can you please pray to God and ask that he saves my family so they don't end here like I do? He doesn't answer my prayers, but I know he answers yours. That is, that thing took me, like, it, it took me, like, I mean, literally almost took me out of the place because he said that God does not answer our prayers while we're, when we're in here, God can hear them, but there's no, there's literally like, there, like there's no love in hell. You know what I'm saying? Like by the time you get to hell, it's too late. So it doesn't matter how hard you pray. You could pray till you sweat in blood. It does not matter. Your prayers will not be answered. 
because you had the time while you read panda suta la bahaya because you had the time while you were here on earth to get it together and mare kando bosoya and so by the time you actually end up in hell like you die and you end up in hell it is too late and so he was praying and asking that I intercede for his family because he knew that God hears my prayers and that he answers my prayers. And I still couldn't even answer. Like I couldn't answer. I couldn't answer him. And um, right when I went to turn, like I, I was like, the guy was kind of like right here. And I went and I turned this way. When I turned this way, I seen a demon come up to me and the demon. um, Oh, yeah, so I seen the demon come up to me. When the demon came up to me, he was like, why are you here? He, like, he's like, why are you here? Haven't you tormented me enough? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, you already, you sent me here. So this is how much power and authority that we have as believers. That when we, when we go and we sit there and literally say, get out whatever spirit it is if it's a spirit of rejection if it's a spirit of torment if we say get out in the name of jesus i command you to go in the name of jesus i command you to go to dry places in the name of jesus they have no choice they have no choice but to go and so he's literally in hell and he's wandering and wandering and wandering and so he was upset because he seen me he said why are you here and I was like, what, like, what do you mean? Why am I here? Like <laughs> in my head, I'm saying, I don't want to be here as much as you don't want to see me here. But I knew that God was trying to show me something. And so, um, what happened was he, he began to talk about how, you know, um, uh, I tormented him and, and because now he's in hell and he can't get out. And he said my name, he said, Alexis. And it was so weird and it was so strange because I was like, how do you know my name? And when I tell you, um, I looked, when I looked around, um, Apostle Nelson, my Apostle Nelson, uh, she told me years ago, and I remember she told me like four years ago, three or four, yeah, about four years ago, she was saying that in um in hell you know demons you know they don't recognize people by names unless you have like a, a you have established authority and um but if you don't have any kind of authority it's just like numbers you know over your head it's just these they know you by your number so yeah just think about when somebody is in prison when they're in jail and they get locked up they are known by inmate number whatever and that is literally their identity. So that's why even when they come out of jail, they're known, they still uh, identify themselves as this number. And it's a prison number. So hell literally is prison, guys. It's, it's prison. So everybody is known in hell as numbers until you have established authority and ranking in the spirit realm and when you have established authority and ranking in the spirit realm then your name now comes over your head this is why in the word it says um jesus i know paul i know but who are you and then the demon had straight authorization to be and legal rights to be able to attack the sons of skiva that's how that happens so I seen my name over my head. Not only did I see my name over my head, I seen the cross was carved into my heart. And then the name of my ministry was right beside it. So he could not touch me whatsoever. Then I began to see, um, there was, if there, there were people that were in hell as well. Um, if they did not have a number over their head, recognizing them or for their identification it was the name of their ministries that that was over their head it's so it's so strong because because if we do not 
fulfill the purposes and the plans that of God that he has given us we all have a purpose we all have a destiny here on this earth and there's some people who are literally called into ministry God gives them a ministry they he gives them their name and if we do not fulfill the purposes and the plans that God has for that specific ministry we will go to hell not only will we go to hell barakanda every soul that was attached matele bohuriakaya to that ministry you have now brought them down to hell with you lebandia sandale bohuriasaya and then you're being tormented marekanda basie y'all are literally seeing a pastor lebandia kaya being tormented and mocked by demons yelebaria kaya by his own ministry with his own ministry and they were laughing at him and this man was in fire this man was thrown in fire he was burning and the demons was laughing and they were mocking him about famous sayings that he has said in his ministry this is not a game to play with this is not something that we should take lightly this this thing is real and what the devil wants he wants you to be called he wants you to get to a place that, that you uh, have a ministry so then he can mock you for not for not fulfilling the plans and the destinies that God had for you not only you but all the souls that were attached to you my God, Father, we thank you that you're on this live. My God, so I'm seeing people, they're getting tormented in hell and they have their ministry above their names and then the people who were attached to them couldn't even understand why there's why 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 my god it's time to wake up 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 Jesus is coming Jesus is coming it's time for us to wake up repent of our sins get our hearts back aligned with God so that we can spend eternity with him he does not wish he does not wish that any of his people perish he does not wish that any of his people perish my god this is why he is literally stalling time to give us time to bring people in into the kingdom of god this is not about us it's about souls this has nothing this has nothing to do with us it has nothing to do with us. The sooner we get out of us and how we feel and what we want to do, the quicker God will begin to work in our lives. Jesus. So um, back to this, this, this demon. So this demon he begins to like scream and he's screaming and he's like literally he's like doing like a piercing scream and he's like doing this and i'm like what is wrong with this dude and uh he was like the light the light is so bright your light is so bright and i was able to see the um it was like it literally was because the thing is hell is is dark like there's parts that's like extremely dark hell is dark um, and then of course, you know, when there's fire, obviously you can see because there's some kind of light coming from there, but hell, hell is dark. And so, you know, even, I think it's even in John, the book of John, where he says, um, you know, that light 
you know, when, when it comes to light and darkness, and darkness does not even understand, he, the darkness can't comprehend light. And so it's me and the angel and it's like, it's extremely bright. So pretty much the light was literally attracting everybody coming to us. So we began to, uh, we walked, we ended up, you know, walking past, uh, this demon while we're walking past this demon. Um, I want to say it looked like a mountain. It was like this mountain. And, but I could tell it was kind of like a place that had, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you know, like a conference room conference meeting type of thing and i seen these um it was like a principality huge uh principality that was um that was there and then he was literally having a meeting with all these other little demons and he was actually telling these demons what to do um and he was giving them plans on what kind of attack to attack the christians to attack the believers on earth. Oh God, repanta sutara bakaya. So when they seen us coming, they instantly like hurried up. They closed, you know, closed up the 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 meeting, and everybody left. And when everybody uh, left, the principality he was still there, but he was like, I want to say like a guard, like he was like a like the guard of everyone who was captured in prison, in hell. And so what happens was, um, he, y'all, this, this demon had to be about 50 foot tall or 50 feet tall. He had, uh, these horns, like these huge horns. And, um, I don't know, like, it looked like he had like lava for eyes. I don't know. He looked like a weird, like lava, like he almost looked like he was made out of a volcano, but he, he was a demon. And, um, what ends up happening was. The angel, no, the, the, the principality said, what are you doing here? And he just like started like doing this like mocking type of laugh. And, uh, the, the, the angel said, give her the keys. And he was talking about me. He said, give her the keys. And the, um, the principality started laughing. And when he began to laugh, he was like, I would never give her the keys. He said, I would never. He's like, do you know who I am? I would never give her these keys and all i can remember is the only thing that came out of my mouth was i literally said jesus the moment you guys i said jesus this 50 foot principality literally the whole right side of his body trembled like he was like like that and he fell to one knee and then he still was like laughing and he was like you think he was like you think you could defeat me you think that that uh just saying that just saying that name it was going to do something and i literally said jesus and the whole left side of his body came down and he literally guys came down trembling to his knees and he was bound to the ground and i said and that's when i said uh every uh knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And even demons tremble at the name of Jesus. So you have to obey. And the angel quickly went and got me like this huge thing of keys. Y'all, it was a huge thing of keys. And when he gave me these keys, when the, the principality fell down and he was literally bound to his knees on the ground, what happened was it opened up where I was able to literally see my family on like both sides of my family. They were all locked up in these prison cells and they were all saying, help me, help me, help me. And then the angels literally looked at me. He handed me the keys and he said, every family has a curse breaker. And you're the curse breaker of your family. And you have the authority when you break the curses to free and unlock all of your family <clears throat> to free and unlock all of your family from this place. My God. And they were literally like shaking, you know, shaking the, like the prison, the cell doors. And I looked at these keys and I looked at my family 
and it, there was one family member in particular who is uh they literally have been seeking and god ended up telling me this he said they've been seeking they've been uh, trying they've been feeling different things but they don't know what it is and he said but it's you that have to break the curse to unlock their freedom and I came here on Rekanda Basia on live to share with you guys that we have the power and the authority to unlock to break the curses and unlock and set our families free to set the captives free my God let us not take advantage or take lightly what Jesus did for us on the cross he gave up his life so that we can have life and have it life more abundantly so this is is even serving as a warning for us to get ourselves together seek Rekanda Basia after his face. Yele Baria Kandaro Bosuya. Turn Ye Rekanda Basaya from your wicked ways. Ye Terebe Kandio Soya. Turn Ye Bandolo Bohuria Kaya from your wicked ways. Ye Terebe Kaya. So that you never, Materebe Kaya, have to Rekanda Rebe Kaya experience this place. Ye Rebandolo Soya. So that you never, Rekanda Basia, have to experience Ye Rekanda Basia torment for eternity. Ye Benda. There is nothing that is too great for our God. That he cannot break. That he cannot destroy. That he cannot demolish. On our behalf. But we have to give up our desires we have to sacrifice what we desire in exchange for what the father wants for us and that is for us to live for eternity that is for us to bring souls into the kingdom of God that is for us to break down the lukewarm Christianity in the body of Christ God is not pleased he is not pleased with the lukewarmness in the body of Christ he is not pleased we are living in an hour where we are seeing hearts being exposed we are living in an hour where you are seeing hearts that being that are being exposed do not conform to the things of this world we're just here temporarily we're here on this earth on a, a on an assignment we're here on an assignment my god we're not here we're not here to please ourselves to please other people my god there's some people that's even on this live my god that needs to even begin to repent my god for being hard on themselves that needs to repent now and forgive themselves there's some things that we always want to blame the devil for and he had nothing to do with it it had everything to do with our flesh so we need to need to even get into a place where we forgive ourselves my God, for even our own things that we've done, our own thoughts, allowing negative and demonic thoughts and coming into agreement with them. I've seen someone in hell literally for their thoughts. You don't have to speak it out loud because God knows your thoughts. My God, we're held accountable to even our thoughts. 
le bari asunta na mahandi okoya she pekandi osuta le bahari akandi asoya and so the last um encounter the last experience that i want to share with you all was last night and um last night god told me he said alexis i want to show you two things that happens in hell yeah. so of course we have weapons you know the bible says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds and so uh we believe you know um i was raised apostolic pentecostal you know kojic so of course we believe in in praising god and dancing i mean you look at david in the bible and he was dancing you know what i'm saying he he was dancing so much he danced his clothes off you know what i'm saying um that is a weapon that we use against the enemy okay the problem is this is something it, this is everything that i'm telling you is everything that the lord has given me i can't tell you anything less than and i can't tell you anything more i can't tell you anything that i have not seen and everything that i'm sharing with you is things that i have literally seen and experienced so um thursday me and my children were in um we were in worship on thursday and literally while we was in worship um just i holy the holy spirit just like literally took over me and i just began to dance and dance and dance and dance and so um when i danced it was a song that was playing but even though it was a song that i that was playing my type of koya holy spirit was actually giving me different words his own words of the song and so I just began to praise God and I'm just shouting and I'm just dancing and, and, and leaping for joy. And then God came to me and said, when you did that, the entire hell, it was an entire earthquake that happened. It was like an earthquake that happened in hell. And I was like, really? He said, yeah. He said, let me show you what happens when you begin to, to praise. And, and, and it's a genuine praise and it's from the heart. You know what I'm saying? We all could look, let me tell you, we all can just praise and get, hey, you know, we can all do that, right? But then, but it's a difference when it, it's literally coming from the heart and it's nothing but the spirit of God. And um, what ends up happening was I literally seen the entire hell just like just started shaking, just shaking and shaking and rocking. And demons began to run and they said, What is happening? What is going on? They literally were blind. They were running into each other. They didn't know what was going on. They were confused. Literally confused. When you, when you praise, you literally confuse your enemies. You literally confuse the whole host of hell. You even see Makaya in, in Acts when uh, Paul and Silas was locked up and they just began to pray and they were worshiping and the earthquake took place, my God. And it, it opened up all of the cells. This is how strong your praise and your worship is. The problem though, is that this is what the Lord told me. He said, the problem though, there's nothing against praising God. I am not against it because I do it. I love it. He said, the problem is, a lot of Christians or a lot of believers rely on that as the only weapon. And there's some weapons, mata rekanda bosoya, you have to use other than that. You gotta fast. You gotta pray. You my rekanda masia tele bohoya. It's a my guy rekanda bosoya taking communion. That is a weapon. Speaking in tongues. That's a weapon. Why? Because the devil can't even comprehend what you're saying. Ma tele bohuria sandele bahadi okoya. So there's different weapons. Reading your word and using your word and using your word in prayer is a weapon. Ma tele bohuria sande bekaya. So ma karasaya. So God began to tell me. He said alexis it's so many people that have only used 
praise as their weapon. And what happened is they made their weapon dull because they overused it. And so he said, you have to use other weapons, other weapons. So he took me into this vision. Uh, this one was actually just a vision. So he took me into this vision and I began to see, uh, like literally it just looked like chaos was happening in hell. And it was off of my kind of It was off of me praising God and my children praising God. Then he showed me, he said, um, Alexis, he said, let me show you what happens when a soul gets free from hell. He said, and this is not the salvation. It's not, he, he wasn't even referring to the salvation prayer. When someone literally gets free, they get free from their, um, from their bloodline. Just getting baptized does not free you from the curses that was already on your bloodline before you got baptized. So he began to show me what happened. He said, when one, when one soul, and this is why the devil gets so mad. When one soul gets free, hey, Ramon, when one soul gets free from hell, what happens is it unlocks tarakaya millions of other souls and it frees them so let's use yabahaya rokoya let's use um Kath, uh, Catherine Kuhlman. she gets freed from hell you know what i'm saying she gets she gets freed she gets freed and delivered matare bokoya after she gets freed and delivered millions of souls that that got saved under her ministry literally gets freed and unlocked from hell the devil's plans is he wants he wants souls he don't care about your body that's why people are selling their souls he wants souls because they're trophies to him. So he knows the importance to keep one person. Because if he can keep one person, he has the power to keep millions of other people. We have to understand that. So we have to get out of even ourselves. Because it's not even just about us. It's not just about me getting free. It's about when I get free. My children get free. When I get free. There's people that who are attached to me. Gets free. And then people who are attached to them. Gets free. It's a domino effect. And so we have to understand that. We have to get to a place where we put down all of our selfish desires because it's not worth it. Temporary satisfaction is not worth eternity in hell. It's not worth eternity in hell. But I wanted to end today on just giving and allowing allowing everyone to know that although this live was about encounters my encounter in hell it's still there's still my god was love it still was the love of god because he began to show when one person gets saved just imagine the people that get saved just from you just from you, just from one person. My God, Rosu Tabahai Rokoya. So I'm going to end this in prayer. Leparia Sande Bekandi Osoya. Father, I pray, oh God, that this touched the hearts of your people. My God, Rekandolo Bosun Tabakaya. Lord, I thank you for your freedom in this message. My God. My God, Rekandara Basi, I thank you for your freedom in this message. Father, I thank you, O God, Nemantio Suya, that today starts the day. Yet Rekanda Masie, that a generations of O God, that a generation of curse breakers, O God, will rise up. My God, Rekanda Masie, no matter how hard the struggle is, no matter how hard Yerekanda Basi Teleba. 
Rahaya, whatever their situation they're going through, my God, Rekanda Basia, that they will know that the joy of the Lord is their strength, oh God, Rekanda Basunta de Bahaya, oh God, Matere Bekaya. I pray right now, Rekanda Basia, for every soul that watches this live, yeah, Rekanda Basia, I pray, yeah, Rekanda Basia, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every soul, my God, Rekanda Basuya, over this live in the name of Jesus that even watches the replay, my God, Rekanda Basia, we pray, oh God, for their souls, yeah, Rekanda Basia, oh God, we decree and declare, my God, that their souls, yeah, Rekanda Basia, would make it into the kingdom of God, Rekanda Basia, and every soul, my God, that's attached to them, will make it to the kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus, Father, let's use this time, oh God, to self-examine ourselves, yeah, Rekanda Basia, open up our hearts, yeah, Rekanda Basia, show us us, yeah, Rekanda Basia, show us our hearts, yeah, Bakaya, show us what's in our hearts, oh God, what's in our minds, yeah, Rekanda Masie, creating us a clean heart, my God, and renew a pure, oh God, spirit within us, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Wash us, oh God. Make us clean and whiter than snow. Father, my terre kinda I decree and declare that everyone watching this, oh God, will have a testimony. That will stop on the devil's head. Every time they begin to open up their mind. My God, your word says, that we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. So, Father, in the name of of Jesus, I decree and declare that mouths shall be open in this hour, that our testimony shall free people, it shall heal people, it shall free us. My God, and we will stop on the enemy's head. We will continue to make hell confused. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will continue to to shine the light that you have placed in us, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. Oh God. Lord, may we not Oh God, be foolish in this hour, but be like the wise virgins, oh God, and bring extra oil. May we, Father, stay ready so that we will not have to get ready. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.